thank you everyone for attending our reconvened um, AGM for 2022. Again, thank you for coming. I would like to pay my respects to the judicial owners and custodians of the lands that I dial in from and collectively from where everyone dials in from. Quick wrap up on how um, today will go since we had um, a big part of our AGM still go ahead a fortnight ago. Uh, for those who are here that haven't seen that, there is a video on the Fusion um, YouTube site as well that you can go and see that. Um, obviously, we didn't hit quorum a fortnight ago, so discussion went ahead, but no, no votes went ahead. So that's the purpose of our meeting today, is to go through and formalise um, the accounts for Fusion Political Party for the year. And then um, also probably the exciting part is to find the results of the uh, committee elections that, uh, that has been going on for the last fortnight um, online. Uh, first up will be to approve the minutes from the previous special general meeting um, and we did take minutes from the meeting a fortnight ago, but obviously that's not the official um, AGM, given that uh, quorum was not met. So the meeting minutes were available from the emails that went out. Um, and I will put some text into the chat of Zoom. And... Uh, I'd ask for raised hands as an indicator of eyes. Is the thumbs up an equivalent to a hand up? Thanks. I'll take any of those. Um, so that's uh, definitely reached a majority. So we'll take that as passed. Thank you very much. So a fortnight ago, uh, Michael, our treasurer, provided a report of the finances um, that we had. I hope everyone who is voting today will um, has seen the video or reviewed that. Um, so I'll put in a, um, a motion to accept the financial report for the previous financial year. So that's gone in the chat as well. Please vote. So these are the more formal um, pieces that, that go into running a, an, an registered organization. So we're an associated um, entity registered in Victoria. 16 hands up out of 16, out of 26. So I'll take that as a majority. Thank you. Next voting is our special resolution. So this was for the constitutional amendments. Again, we discussed this a fortnight ago in the previous AGM meeting that we, we did have, went through briefly, so that's in the video. It's also been circulated in the emails and available on the website to check through the amendments that uh, the current executive has proposed for the constitution. Now, there's going to be probably plenty more as we go over the next few um, special general meetings and annual general meetings to really get the, the constitution and the state that allows us just to operate without having to think about too much of this stuff. Um, I'm not sure about anyone else, but running the organization is not the coolest part of being part of a political um, party, right? So we want to try and make it as easy and seamless as possible. Uh, so this has particular text that will be recorded for the organization as well. So the text is that the amendments proposed to the rules of the association for fusion political party constitution version 1.1 be accepted in their entirety. So there is a version 1.2. Anyone else want to second that? Well, technically, I think you've already seconded it in the oh. email that went out, Andrea. Oops. All right, I better do that then. So yeah, interesting thing with special resolutions and they are things like changing uh, the rules of the association, the text for that 
motion needs to go out as part of the AGM notice. So that's why that was uh, included in the emails. And it goes out with, with the motion text and the seconder. Cool. All right, so we've got uh, 19 hands up and a thumb. Anyone, 22. Now, a special resolution also requires 75% as opposed to just a majority. Are you taking into account all the all the proxies, Roger, assuming there are proxies? We will for this one because it's uh, going to be a close one. Well, it shouldn't be close. 23, uh, 27. Uh, yeah, that's more than three quarters anyway. So that at first glance um, hits 75%. I will double check those against the proxies um, afterwards, but and 23 out of 26 definitely is. So, and out of the three who have not put their hands up, there wouldn't be enough to make up 25%. So I'm going to call that as a pass. Uh, and there is one other uh, motion that was raised in the initial emails um, and items that went out to everyone that was going to be raised today. And we had an interesting discussion towards the end of the um, meeting last fortnight. So I will raise it here and invite um, any discussion, questions, concerns um, before we do go to a, an actual vote is the implementation of a annual subscription fee. So the suggestion was that uh, the joining an annual membership renewal fee be increased to $20, um, allowing four exceptions to be granted by the secretary or executive committee. So at the moment, um, membership to Fusion Party is free and there is no annual subscription fee at all. Um, so before I put forward that text, um, is there anyone who would like to speak for or against? Roger, can I speak against it? Um, yeah, I guess, um, first of all, um, just to check, aren't we at the border of like how many members we need to be registered? Last count, we were we were in the eighteen hundreds, um, so we need fifteen hundred, obviously, to stay registered as a federal federal party. Um, we don't have enough members in any of the states currently for state registrations. Uh, so, yes, that's uh, I, I guess what you're suggesting is that it might discourage memberships. Yeah, I guess one theory is like um, people who stayed members could become more engaged. I guess, you know, like I gave $20, I should, you know, make the most of it. But I guess I would be more worried about um, a whole bunch of people who are, you know, barely members, but we need them to make up the numbers. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the $20 discourages them. Um, I guess like, you know, in this model where membership remains free, we would have to rely on just a few people being quite generous. Um, like I guess yeah I, I'm betting on that outcome yeah 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 we do um so in terms of raising money like raising capital um we always seem to manage to to raise decent amounts of money around election times uh the hardest part financially is that that money generally comes at the time of the election whereas a lot of the prep work um, to run elections still costs money. Um, so there is, is, is that consideration. But um, I think in the last session, we had a bit of discussion around, yeah, there's, there's really two, um, two areas that uh, applying a membership fee might be looked at. One is raising capital and the other is keeping um our membership base active based on the fact that they've you know, committed financially to it. Um, and those three things less than something they paid for. Yeah. Having said that, it's not as if paying for a gym membership 
gets people using it <laughs> in many cases uh or, or our netflix true. subscriptions or whatever i think i'm in the camp of like if we put a mandatory 20 dollars, then we might lose an amount of members we can't afford to lose i think finding ways where the renewal forms strongly encourage it and outline why we need this money so make clear that like look we often get well as you said we often get the money at uh election time but uh a lot of these expenses actually come well ahead of when the election is called uh and we need to be prepared in advance also there's state elections as well not just the federal election yeah i'm i'm sort of along those lines as well of um i think especially as sort of I've mentioned this sort of as treasurer or like I've given reports and things that um, it's really important that when people are donating or, or giving money or time that they know that that uh, those resources are going to the right place. Um, and um, there are all sorts of planning and, and various things to be done over the next while to, to, to sort of for, for upcoming elections or other events. But there is um, uh, maybe it's not clear enough for uh, like maybe our plans or our future plans aren't developed enough for us to say, hey, like we need you need to give us money because we're going to spend it on this. Um, whether or not we would, but yeah, but whether or maybe there's a step in between us receiving, uh, sort of charging yearly memberships, which is just, yeah, as just said, um, that hey, we we create these plans and we say, all right, this is how much we would like to spend, and doing drives on that first before we start sort of mandating things may like i think there is a there is definitely some arguments both on on both sides and there's a bit of a balance to to work out but it's it's a i don't know if we have any, anyone has a proper sort of clinical analysis of it mm. we've got some parallel discussion going on so if, um don't mind i'll read out the meeting chat yeah thanks um so alex asked how would that work in terms of pirate members um and i would think it just is a matter of whether you want to be a fusion member, then the the fusion fee applies if there is one. That point has come up in terms of, uh, I think it was science members as well. We had uh, with the executive election, um, we had a member who contacted us because they hadn't got their email and it turned out that they were a science member who had not opted into fusion mm. so th there are situations like that across several of the branches i believe um and we also had the point made uh, last time around that secular has their own membership fee but that would just be something else to navigate a lower fee five dollars has been suggested a few times would be more acceptable um it's it's easy to say twenty dollars isn't a lot of money when it's not a lot of money for you personally. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I suppose the minimum that would make sense to collect from people would be two dollars. That would be tax deductible. I guess that's a decision we could make if we vote down the twenty dollars. We could see if anyone wants to put forward a motion to make the membership fee five dollars. Um, the other point was just whether a scaled fee had been discussed. Um, we hadn't discussed um, different scales like different tiers um different amounts but it was um at the executive or the secretary's discretion the fee would be waived on um on request like I, I was i was going to suggest um we adopt something similar to the um iww uh approach um uh where we're in that members that have a gainful income um uh, are required to pay a membership fee, but unemployed workers are not. So, mm -hmm. if a person if a person if a person can't afford it, then they that would be entirely waived, and they could retain membership for free. But if they're earning a gainful income, then they should contribute. I Do we even we have any to... way to legally collect that information? Yeah, I mean, and being unemployed is like people don't label themselves as being unemployed forever that could be for two months or whatever it, it, it's a trade the iww does it on a trust basis so if you if you rock up and just declare that you you don't have an income then they will let you join for free 
Yeah, well, that's what Andrea had just said. So if someone yeah. had, if someone has an issue with paying twenty dollars, like twenty dollars is less than a pub meal. I yeah uh, yeah as I mentioned in chat yeah it's a, it's a, a, a few coffees or a six pack of beer like it's not. There's been times in my life when twenty dollars has been a lot of money. Yeah. Same. Um, it's I mean, like it's the difference like, between feeding your children or being in a political party you're going to feed yes, your children but we are yeah. not forcing anyone to join so this is their choice if they want to join fusion um a nice point that's in between which is to make it a checkbox option where you don't have to um, perhaps go through a process that is potentially stigmatizing and ask for the discount but you just tick the box to say i can't afford it that's that's that sounds like a good balance. Um, is there, Can we, I suggest we go to a speaking order, just an administrative point of order, because we have a lot of people wanting to talk on these issues. Okay, it's a it's a good point. Um, so we'll go back to hands up um, to get that speaking order. Um, Peter, we'll go first with you. I'm uh, looking not at the risk of losing members and therefore failing to register, which is a significant risk. But I'm also forward looking in terms of recruiting new members. And that is, in my view, the fundamental challenge for us over the next 12 months to grow the party. And it seems to me it's a hell of a lot easier to grow the party by offering what we have to value and not, not creating a financial hurdle for people to join us. I think certainly once we establish our value proposition to our new members, that it is it is something that we can raise in 12 months time at the next AGM, once we've established ourselves as a party and we have a strong following to then ask for that financial support. So I'm certainly of the view that uh, we retain the party as a no fee membership. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Um, Miles, you next. I like the idea of a reliable method of funding for the party. It's, it's very, very attractive and could be very useful for campaigning and for everything else we want to do. But I am more against this than in favor of it. And one reason I'm in a major reason I'm against it, which hasn't been mentioned by anyone yet, is that uh, putting aside the question of a financial burden, there's also an administrative burden both for the organization to administer this, because there's been a bit of discussion already about how we would levy it, but also there's an administrative burden on the individual to do it. And so again, we might say $5 isn't much. It's, it's, it's worth a coffee at the same time, you know, two minutes to make or, or five or 10 minutes to make a payment also isn't much, but again, it is an extra burden um, in the way of getting more members. And um, as has been pointed out, we, are, we, we have enough members to be registered federally, but not enough to be registered at a state level. That should be our biggest priority to focus on growth. And we can talk about strategic goals independent of getting elected or getting votes. But I think, um, I think for the most part, all of us would agree that we do intend to contest elections. We do intend to try and get votes. And to do that, we do need to grow. And so the less barriers in place of growth, uh, the better. And, and we simply don't have such a critical need for money. Um, we do, uh, as in the financial report, we did have quite healthy finances during the election. We could have spent far more money if we had far more money, but we didn't. We spent the money we had. We had enough to, to, to run a campaign. Saha? Yeah, I'd like to counter some of the things that Miles just said. So about funding, we didn't have enough funding. And... Um, you did recently ask me how to fundraise for Victoria only this weekend. So I think that's clear that we don't have enough funding. And so I have a few things to say about just requesting for a little bit of information, a little bit of donation money. And it's because we're not enforcing anyone to participate. You know, um, people can choose if they resonate with a particular party or not and pay $20. And like Andrea said, there is that tick box if they are not able to be in a position to pay that and that is fine. No judgment there. But this is, um, this is a relationship that we're having with our members. You know, we do all of this work for free. It's not easy work. Um, $20, not a lot of money. 
to be fair, considering all the work we're doing behind the scenes and what we are offering as an option in this very tilted and biased democracy. Um, and I think as well, what the $20 does is it um, ensures the people that join our party are committed, which is the number one thing that we are really lacking. So we have members who have been um, historically quite involved with, you know, Fusion and, and the other the parties, but they're not um, being as committed. And I think, you know, we don't have to spell it out, but it's like, if you don't pay for something, you don't value it. So if people are happy to make the conscious decision that they will invest $20 a year for a party, that it means that they have made the commitment. They've consciously decided, yes, I will, I'll invest something, whether it's time or money, they are investing something to this cause that they care about because they value it. Um, and yeah, and I think as well, we also want to be um, here existing as fusion because we want to have a strong effect on democracy and that means we need money for advertising we need money for just holding events anything we can't be doing things um for free but then i guess something miles said um about you know wanting to exist to contest you know elections and participate and, and things like that well i mean as the pirates have demonstrated we don't have to be registered to still have a say. So if we're worried about not having enough members to be registered because of that $20 barrier, I mean, we don't have to be registered to have a say. So it depends what we want to achieve. And I think the $20 thing is an agreement from the members that they will participate and help participate and they actually value what Fusion will stand for. It's a little bit of a hard sell because we don't know what Fusion stands for yet, but I'm standing for the $20. Thanks. Uh, Alex, you're up. Alrighty. Um, I would like Fusion to be in the position where it can ask people or where it can require people to pay money every year. I don't think we're there yet um, for several reasons. One, um, our membership numbers are marginal for the AEC threshold. Um, two, because we've got this organizational federality, um, for, for want of a better word. And I, I recognize that my party is the number one cause of this um, disparity in our membership processes at the moment. But as it stands, it's going to be a wild time. Um, like if, if Fusion membership is 20 bucks, and then okay cool but also pirate members are transitively fusion members so do we now have to go and collect that money on fusion's behalf um like i need a concrete proposal there um and i'm not sure that's been fully thought through yet like whatever the proposal is is what it is but you know um that needs to be thought about um possibly this time next year we'll have sorted our shit out and gotten rid of our separate and decided to get rid of our separate database maybe we won't have in at and all of the other parties as well right you've got um some people who are fusion members some people who are not fusion members this continual disparity of process um and i think we need to um resolve that before we can start levying um, membership specifically um, and enforcing membership specifically for Fusion. Um, absolutely, um, everyone should be asked to renew annually and asked to pay annually, but there should be, a, I think, a free option. Thanks, Alex. Um, just before I move on to the, in the line, uh, it's a very, very good point, but we should probably separate the um the decision on charging from how we go about doing it that that may actually tell when we kick that in um, because if it's not technically feasible if we need some other way around we might need to delay that um, but we could probably still go ahead with the general decision on requesting that 
but uh, but very good points, Alex. Uh, and Andrea. Thank you, Roger. Um, I started out this discussion being slightly in favour of the fee, thinking that we could uh, waive it for anyone who asks. Um, but I think the administrative um, argument is what's um, changed my mind to being slightly against um, having it as a, um, you know, having a formal motion so that we have a fee of $20 that is waived, but rather we have a suggestion every time someone signs up or renews their membership to donate $20. Um, yeah, so I just favour trying to ask people first. Um, and as Michael said, uh, saying what we're going to use it for. So that's me. Thanks. Yeah, I think there was a um, there was a comment somewhere in the chat about that too, um, being really specific on what the funds would be used for. Uh, Andrea. Hey, all. Uh, I just want to speak to it based on experience with the science party and formerly the future party um, we bounced around a lot with regards to mandatory annual fees and uh, fees where you could say you could just send an email to opt out and say oh I, I can't afford it the point that we finally got to was we had the onboarding for the membership flow when you become a member you sign up then you get taken to another page that talks about how to support the party financially and suggested amount to pay and you can that can be a recurring or a one-off or you just there's a button at the bottom i'll i'll do it later so it doesn't make it awkward for people that are in a five dollars two dollars or ten dollars um like i'm currently donating i think it's like 10 bucks a month just off the bat and i'll throw money down whenever there's some kind of campaign that needs some money so i think mill spec mentioned it and we we do that when it come when we come to elections as well. We tend to raise that war chest in the months leading up to the elections, and then we spend almost all of it generally. Um, at least, sorry, that's how we did with the science party. We would always keep enough buffer to maintain the administration costs for the rest of the year, or, you know, year on year. So, generally, I think what what has worked, uh, we ask people to pay uh, after the sign up if they want to, they can. Every now and then we might do a donation drive, and then otherwise, when it comes to elections, we just say help us support it, help support us, and a mixture of all those has always been fairly successful in getting us the money we needed. And we have more people now. Like we were doing it with around about between five and eight hundred people, and now we have at least fifteen hundred people to ask this same question if they can afford it. So, an, an easy way to test this is just to implement that plan. Like you don't need to make it mandatory at first um but you do definitely i think a few people have mentioned already you risk people dropping off as well because they don't if it's mandatory that is um they will lose we'll, we'll go below that 1500 threshold and it's going to be tough to get it back when you're asking people to pay money and if you don't have a clear value proposition for what they're getting for what they pay um so you know you got the true believers that are logging on right now, but not all of our 1500 are true believers yet. So you have to convince them and, you know, we need a good story for that. Cool. Thanks, Andrea. Um, we've got David and Miles on the queue. Um, I might call it at the end of that and we'll take it to a vote anyway, based on everyone having the opportunity to either say their piece or, um, or have thought about it considerably anyway. So um, I'll go to David first. Um, yeah, cheers. I, I think I'm just <laughs> echoing um, Andrea and Andrea's um, thoughts at this point. And that is that uh, initially I thought it shouldn't be a, much of an imposition to require a, a base membership fee. Um, but given, given our membership numbers and the fact that we don't want to ostracize anybody for their financial situations, um, le leaving it as a an opt in type of thing. We can we can do what PPAU does, and that is have a suggested donation as a default. But the option is there to pay what you can. Um, that way, that that way, we don't have to sort of enforce it, and and we can always include uh, a a request for those who can afford it in the membership renewal emails that 
obviously gets sent out annually. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm I've I've shifted by thinking across this discussion. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm in favour of keeping it optional for now. Oh, well, thanks, David. Uh, Miles, I just wanted to quickly address the point that the Pirate Party has optional donations for our renewal system, and we have a. Uh, require members to renew on a yearly basis and so that's proven to be um, provide a regular source of donations i don't have the numbers in front of me but um, we haven't had financial stress from administrative burdens in that sense um, and just want to reiterate my concern is members and so any administrative burden on members to pay this or any financial burden even if um, uh, even if small is counterproductive to what our primary goal is or should be, which is growing. Cool. Thanks, Miles. Um, all right, I will put the uh, text for the vote in chat and run it as it was um, sent out with, um, with the notification. So that is that the joining an annual membership renewal fee be increased to $20 allowing for exceptions to be granted by the secretary or executive committee. And we'll go with the hands thing again, um, but I'll ask for both fours and against. So I'll start with um, voting for- So for a $20 fee. For a $20 fee, correct. A mandatory one. Mandatory $20 subscription. So new members would be charged $20 on joining and each member would be asked to uh, pay $20 each year on renewal. All right, so that was uh, three votes for. Um, if I could get you to put your hands down and just to be certain, um, can I get a show of, well, actually that's, that's not, would anyone at this point like to um, suggest an amendment to the text? Is there anything restricting the executive from instituting a membership fee outside of the AGM? I mean, it's not written in the constitution, is it? I thought it was. I thought there was actually wording in the constitution for it. Let me just read it out: annual subscription and fee on joining is currently rule number 13 in our constitution and it states that the committee a recommends to the annual general meeting the amount of the annual subscription if any and joining fees if any for the following financial year and b determines the date for payment of the annual subscription well, that implies the the agm is the only one that has the power to institute it it does indeed so what is the counter for this no one's put anything into the chat about an amendment oh, I'm happy to been discussion about it I, I would I'm happy to recommend five dollars which I've found you know we did it for vote planet and it was optional and you know if you can't do it don't uh most people donated 20 you know 10 20 or 50 so keeping it low didn't stop them it was like it it encouraged them to donate more um, that, that, that's the a, current Oh, uh, sorry, Liam, that, that, that's the current default anyway. So I don't think we need to, if we're just going to leave it as an optional um, membership donation, there's nothing to vote on. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, I think this has been a difficult thing to discuss without too much visibility of funding that is needed and yearly administrative costs. I mean, I think if we had um, that involved in the discussion, we would have a bit more of a, an informed decision on this, because there's a few things at play. There's administrative costs. There's also just the psychological, um, you know, getting people to, to commit to what they value. Um, and then as well, I, I just, I don't understand why we're too shy to ask for $20. I think the amount of work that people in the organization of Fusion have put in is definitely worth more than $20. I, I that feels like a weird argument to me. Firstly, I I don't know if anyone I don't know who's shy, um, but also like comparing it based on the work that people are doing seems weird as well because these people like like we're not getting paid. Um, it's going yeah. to 
those sort of other things and every different people are doing different amounts of work and that kind of stuff. So I, those arguments seem doesn't seem that doesn't really seem related to me. Well, it's oh. it's not in a company sort of way. What I'm saying is it's about demonstrating what we value. And if we value what oh. fusion offers, then we all demonstrate that by contributing or or whatever we yeah. need. But all right. Um we'll 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 call it there, Miles, really, really quickly. Yep. All right. So I just did a quick search over the constitution just to clarify that point. There is another section that discusses the annual subscription fee. And it said the business of the AGM is to set, vary, or confirm the rate of the subscription fee. So it implies that we do have to make a decision about the value in yep. this meeting, whether that's zero dollars or uh greater than zero dollars. Uh, I think it is worth noting if it is a voluntary really? amount, then uh that is completely up to the executive how you want to set that up we could discuss it and make recommendations here for that but the executive would be able to make a decision for a recommended amount on their own and institute that on their own no no they can't the agm has to make that decision it's no, the committee a recommended that provides amount for for a mandatory amount agm has to make the decision for a, a recommended donation uh with yeah. a thing that goes uh, with the form it's just uh, a question of copy on the website yeah uh there is uh, no more so there is actually a section the committee Miles, that that's, that's i still don't think that's quite correct it's all it's all we need if okay. if the executive is putting it on some text into an email saying please donate some money they can say how much goes in there is what liam's saying because we're not actually asking for a fixed amount but we are currently voting on a fixed amount so um is there any favor in me putting forward a motion for the same but at five dollars personally i'm not a big fan of going ahead without having more time than just the confines of this meeting to consider that all right so in that case with only three votes for that motion that motion has failed uh, and the subscription fee will remain free. Uh, and that brings to a close all the motions that we had for this annual general meeting, um, which is cool. So now we can pass over to um, Liam, who is our returning officer, who has been collating all of the votes for the committee elections over the last fortnight. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, I'll hand over chair of the meeting to Liam um, and then from there to whoever the new president is. So over to you, Liam. Thank you. We had 1,917 email voters. 87 of those emails were rejected. 25 bouncing, one marked as spam by an email provider, 61 who basically indicated that they didn't want to participate, were abstaining. Uh, so a total of 1,830 delivered. Of those, after a couple of reminder emails, we had a total of 325 people who actually registered a vote, uh, at least one of which was completely blank because they emailed me to tell me they'd mucked it up but uh, because I have no way to link an individual voter to their vote, uh, there was nothing I could do about that. So unfortunate, but I couldn't give them an extra vote. Um, so for the six positions, uh, five of them passed in the first round. So I'm gonna start with the one that didn't. Uh, registered officer. Uh, we had one person make exactly 50% of the vote but you need 50% plus one vote to be elected. Uh, this is interesting because we had 6% asking for seek further candidates. Now, OPA vote treated that seek further candidates as a candidate and redistributed those votes, but technically that's not how it's meant to work. Having said that, the, the way it's described in our constitution would just mean that the votes from the other candidates of which there's only one would be redistributed. Uh, so it won't affect actually change the results in any case. So the, the uh, elected registered officer is Owen Miller. 
the elected national campaigns coordinator is Luke James. Treasurer is Michael Moroske, who was elected unopposed. Andrea Long is the secretary, also elected unopposed. Peter Johnson has been elected as convener and elected as the president is, and I am sorry if I mispronounce your name, Saha Kaliri Nagede. Uh, now, I am sending out an automatic email from the OPA vote system that will go to all voters who have voted uh, with those full results. Uh, I'll also be downloading these, distributing them to the new executives so they can put them up on the website or wherever is appropriate. Congratulations to all our elected candidates. And uh, I suppose I should pass chair over to our newly elected president then, uh, Saha. Wow, thank you. Um, is, are we still having um, Roger complete the rest of this AGM? You know, I'm not sure if we've formally set a policy for how we handle that. I know in uh, Pirates, it was generally the new president would become the uh, chair for the remainder of the meeting. Yeah, that's that's how our constitution runs too. So okay, up all to right. You, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you can help me with just posting the agenda or something, that would be great. Sure, I'll chuck it in the chat. Um, but I'll I'll give you a hint. That was the end of the formal proceedings. So oh, okay. You can cool. either wrap it up <laughs> or go into some sort of speech or. Um, oh, okay. Or um, all right. So I just want to say thank you for the three hundred people who participated in voting. Um, and um, I'm very excited to accept this position. I've been um, thinking about future ideas for fusion and. And I'd really like to, as soon as um, this was settled, I'd really like to get the new executive together and um, start to brainstorm about where we want Fusion to go. So um, we will do that. I'll send everyone an email and we'll go get organizing on that. Um, and if the rest of the new executive that have just come on board would like to say a few things, let's do that. So I'll pass it to uh, Andrea, secretary. Well, thing. Thank you, Saha. Um, well, I think all I have to say is uh, after this, I'll go and uh, update email lists and things, so we'll all be able to organise. I'm, um, I am excited for the next stage of fusion um, and where we go from here. It's been a, an interesting story so far as we've come together, and I, uh, I'm sure it will continue to be interesting. Yeah, Peter. Yeah, good day all. Um, look, it's a formative stage for the party, and I think the next 12 months are going to be very telling of our capacity to grow our membership and also really clarify our political niche, our political image, and uh, through that process, our political future. Look, I think there is an element of hard work, but I think more importantly, most successes in this space come from very wide networking and growing numbers. And uh, I think, I guess, my commitment, firstly, thank you very much for the trust by the membership in my role. My commitment is very much to grow that network. And I think, secondly, to exercise some stewardship in the decisions that we make so our resources aren't wasted and the investment is productive for our common good, you know, our common goals. So thanks all. I look forward to spending some time with our new members on the executive committee and, of course, our membership as it grows and each of you as members that want to participate. A quick reminder, we are going through the process of seeking submissions for names of our political party. That process will end towards the end of November. I'm going to encourage everyone to dream up a name and send it through so we have a diverse range of choices. Thanks, looking forward to working with you for the next 12 months. Thank you, Peter. Um, yeah, Luke? Uh, yeah, thanks very much. Um, I'm quite excited to 
see where we can take things next. I've got a lot of ideas as well for the future of campaigning for fusion. And um, I think we've got a real bright two or three years ahead of us for uh, what we can do. Um, so congratulations to all who were elected and thank you to everybody who nominated. And awesome. thank you for those who have fulfilled the role so far and done so very well. Thanks, Luke. Michael? Thank you, Saha. Um, yeah, similar thing to everyone. A big thanks to everyone who's participating, obviously. Um, a, a sort of important note, I think, is that um, while uh, there are certain responsibilities that those in the exec have and things like that, there's, uh, we don't, like this party doesn't exist without sort of a larger support base whether or not that is donations as we've discussed and things like that before, or just all of the various little things that people do. Um, that's the thing that we we need to grow. Um, that's the thing that we we want to establish. But um, in order to do that, the, the important thing is to make sure that uh, you are on board and you are comfortable and you, are, you, 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 you know or you feel confident that uh, what we are doing matters and is important and uh it can is and can achieve something um so i mean anything that we're ever doing or uh, it's, it's it's sort of very important that um you get involved you make your voice heard make sure that you know uh that we that we know what you want um and uh be sort of yeah, get in, get involved in any way you can in in whatever capacity you can yeah, thank you thanks michael pleasure and owen Hi guys, um, thanks a lot for believing in me. Um, and yeah, I hope to do the most I can to support the new executive. Um, yeah, I guess like, you know, Australia I feel has been sort of stumbling towards irrelevance for decades. Um, and yet, you know, we have such, um, I guess like all the ingredients to make um, such a much more harmonious, successful nation. Um, and yeah, I'd be, I'm keen to make this happen. Um, and yeah, thank you everybody for, um, believing in the same cause yeah yeah awesome all right here we go <laughs> i did not feel prepared for that but um yeah so i'll just email the exec we'll get stuff going and um because i used to be engagement chair i'll be looking for someone who would like to step up to support engagement um and i guess feel free to email through or message or contact us however you like just about ideas of how you want fusion to be in the future because I really don't want to be creating what fusion is in a silo. It really depends on feedback and interaction from our members. Um, we'll at least start off putting some groundwork and a bit of a structure, but we really depend on having external feedback to know what people need from us. So stay tuned. That's it. I think um, we'll just wrap it up. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> cool. All right. I Thanks, guys.